Hello everyone, welcome back to tutorial 4. Today we'll learn how to extract information from all the data that we already have. In the last tutorial, we calculated according to lexical analysis the positive score and the negative score and then the overall score. So let's calculate the percentage, it's quite simple. Uh, we renamed the table underscore final. Do you remember what table underscore final was? Just for a quick recap, table underscore final was this. There was the text, the overall score, the positive score and the negative score. Now we are extracting the positive part, the positive column, these scores and naming it positive score, POSSC, POS score, ne similarly negative score. Now we add a new column, the positive percentage. How to do it? Very simple. You simply divide positive score by the total score. But what happens here? There's a problem that happens here. I'll tell you what it is. Can you guess what the problem is? Okay, sorry. Uh, I did not uh, run what positive score, negative score is. And now we add a new column. The problem that arises is there will be some cases in which the total is zero. Then positive score will be divided by zero. That will cause NAN, not a number. Okay, like this case, NAN. So just replace NAN with zeros. The positive percentage is zero. That's what it means basically, doesn't it? So just replace it like this. This is called PP. In that, if NAN uh, is there, then just it is replaced with zero. That's it. And again, positive percentage is PP. Similarly, you can do for negative percentage also. So finally, if you run this, our table underscore final looks like this. Okay, very nicely the positive percentage and the negative percentage is calculated. Now, we can use this in graphs. Okay, so the three scores can be used in a histogram and then it's very simple. Just use the directly the histogram function. And I have used color equals to rainbow. You don't necessarily need to do that. But it just makes it look very nice. Like if you do just hist of table underscore final dollar positive, then it looks somewhat like this. But if you do color equals to rainbow, let's assume 10 colors. Sorry, did I miss something else? Then it looks like this. So it's just color, it looks more nice. So we have done color equals to rainbow of 10. So, so you can use all this and you'll see the three histograms. The score looks like this. Positive looks like this. Negative looks like this. Okay. Now let's move on to a pie chart. You can simply do a normal pie chart or a 3D pie chart. Okay, you define what the slices will uh, tell us. Uh, I have done some of the uh, the positive score and some of the negative score, so that we can understand how much positivity is there and how much negative sentiment is there. So we can know what is dominating. Okay, and labels are simply positive and negative. You use library plot tricks, and you can have the pie chart. Okay. If you do the pie chart, it looks somewhat like this. It's quite simple. We gave it a title, sentiment analysis. We use the slices and labels that we defined here. And we did color equals to rainbow. You can use 10 colors or you can use length of label. Simply two colors is enough. So pie chart looks like this. But if you do pie 3D, it looks a little better. This is how it looks. So we are using Trump.tweets. Here we found out that people are talking more positively about Trump than talking negative about him. Okay. So that's how you derive information and understand the sentiment of people and know what people feel towards a candidate or the president or someone else. So word cloud looks quite interesting. So let's understand how we make it. You use sapply. What does sapply does? We have used lapply before. It converts it into a list. It basically returns a list. sapply returns a vector. 
in this case a character vector so charm dot tweets okay we will uh, we want the textual part of it that is just the tweet part because term dot tweets have lots of information like how many times it is retweeted number of retweets is retweeted false or true and so on so the get text uh, we uh, derive the textual part and we store it in a vector okay so this is what this does So Trump underscore text. Let's do head of that. Okay, just the textual part is derived. Now convert it into a data frame. Very simple. So head of DF. Now all the information is there. Now we can know the structure of this data frame by doing str of trump underscore text here we had removed the emoticons in trump underscore text okay i missed this out that's why it's showing an error sorry yes now we do str of trump underscore text then it will give the structure okay now we use a text mining library, the TM library in short, and we use a corpus. What is a corpus? It is basically a collection of text documents. Now, we are defining the corpus of Trump underscore text, which we had defined before. And let's see what a corpus looks like. Trump underscore corpus. This is how a corpus looks like. It tells us that 150 documents have been uh, gone through and this is what happened let's inspect the first document okay document one it has 92 characters seven metadata and so on and this is the content female underscore text it actually went well donald trump saved america from radical eastern culture okay now we need to clean the text before we make the word cloud okay we use a library word cloud obviously to make the word cloud we clean that uh, clean the text and there are four things that we do. We remove the punctuation, we remove the stop words, we remove the numbers, and we strip the white space. Once we're done with that, the word cloud shall be formed. Seems like I minimized it by mistake. Yeah, here it is. Okay. It's generated. The most used word is Trump, and that's why it's written in huge letters. And the Words which are used less frequently are written in small font. Moving on, the top trends. We can also find the top trends according to location of a place. Okay, all the available equations are stored in A trends. A underscore trends gives all these locations and it gives the world ID, the W O E I D. Okay the country and the name is given so let's choose suppose ottawa of canada the serial number is three so we put here three and the name ottawa so woid can be extracted that's done so let's see what woeid sorry woeid is 3369 is that correct ottawa 3369 so correctly it extracted it now it's in canada so i just named it canada underscore trend it uh, gets the trends according to woeid let's see what the trends are so these are the trends the name is given and the url here we just renamed it as trends both the columns are intact the name and the url now we have to clean the data and remove non-english words okay so trends dollar name that means this column we just need this so we store that in dat okay just the tags are there hashtags now we uh whatever however it is differentiated we unlist it okay now it's stored like this now we remove whatever smileys are there, if any emoticons. Okay. And now we just remove 
those. So, twenty here was causing a problem because of this alphabet. So that's removed. Okay. Now T A T four. Done. These are the hashtags of Ottawa that are trending there. All right. So top trending is done. The word cloud is done. This is left. The word cloud is done. Graphs are done, and positive percentage is done. Now, one more thing that we can do is, according to the user, we can know what are the top ten hashtags of that particular user. For example, Barack Obama. What do we do? We use the function user timeline, and Suppose 3200 tweets are taken into consideration. Okay, so a tweet list will be formed. This will take a long time because we are using 3200 tweets. Till now, we are working with 150 tweets, which can be extended to 1500 tweets also. But we stuck with 150, so it was faster. Now we are taking 3200 tweets. It will be more accurate, but obviously, it will be more slower. Now we convert the list to a data frame using tweet list to df very simple okay so now tw looks somewhat like this all the informations are there okay now just the textual part we need because tw dollar text contains the actual tweets so we just store it in vec1 vector1 okay now we need to extract the hashtags so this pattern is defined that there will be a hashtag followed by some alphabets. Okay. Now we try to find out that in which of these tweets hashtags are used and in which it is not used. Okay. So let's see in which the indices will be written in which hashtags are used. So all these are there. Look, second one is not there. Why? Let's see. So see, there are no hashtags used in this statement, but in first one, there is a hashtag used, hashtag Obamacare. Okay. Now we match it and we extract the hashes, actual hashtags that are used, matching it with the pattern and these indices. So extracted dot hash. These are the hashtag used, hashtag do a job, hashtag good Friday. Act on climate. See, so many times hashtag act on climate is used. So now we need to find the frequency with which these hashtags are used. Okay. So let's store that into a data frame in a tabular format so that the frequency can be known. See, now act on climate is used 58 times. Do your, do your job is used 66 times. So it's not ordered properly. This should this is the highest frequency. This is the second highest. So let's reorder it. Let's call the columns as tag and frequency instead of var1 and frequency. And then let's reorder it. Now it looks better. Do your job is at the top and act on climate is second and so on. After this, we are using the top 50 hashtags. We have only 35 apparently, so it's the top 50 is used. And we make sure it's reordered so that when we make the graph, the top one is the first one is the one the highest frequency. Library ggplot2 is used and is what we do we fill it with blue color the plots okay and the tag and frequency is used and the coordinates are flipped so that uh, it's more properly visible I mean the bars are generally what like this right normal like you saw in histogram the bars are like that but we flip the coordinates so the bars will come like this okay that is horizontal instead of vertical. Otherwise, it was not very clear the, what the hashtag was. It was getting clumsy. 
and the title is given. So this is what I was talking about. Since we flip the coordinate, they are horizontal now. And since we are using DAT2, that is why we reordered it. That is why this is at the top. Do your job is at the top and so on. Otherwise, this would not be at the top. Like if you do DAT, sorry, DAT, this is how it looks. It's random. Okay. So now we learned many important things today that how the simple thing like using a very basic score that simply positive minus negative we can use in such a variety of ways such visual representations to understand that how much dominating factor is there in negativity and positivity and what are the trending tweets all over the world what are the top 10 hashtags of a famous personality all these things can be derived. I hope you enjoyed this fun tutorial and do come back for the next tutorial in which we'll try to put all of this information into a front end. You can do it on your own. I'll be explaining Shiny application, which is a very easy front end in R. You can use all this and make your own software to learn further. You can use machine learning algorithms like Naive Base, SPM, that is support vector machines to improve the accuracy of the sentiment analysis and you can do a lot more. Keep enjoying. Have a nice day. Thank you.